Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video on my YouTube channel. I'm Nicholas and we have arrived at my personal highlight within Queen of Season 2. Now the, the moment I've been waiting for the most basically even though next week will probably be just as exciting. We have reached the finale. And in this finale, all the candidates that we have now been watching every single week for now the nearly past two months are releasing an own new song to then perform in the final and tenth episode next week. And last year when I reacted to the Kingdom songs um, from the finale, I was blown away by those, right? It was absolutely awesome. It was such a cool concept to me to after covering and um, re-performing so many of their own or other songs to then actually go ahead and make their own song. Song, um, for the finale of the show, I love that concept and I love the uh, amount of variety that the Kingdom songs actually offered. Um, I only know Lion from the first season of Queen and I do not know the other songs that were produced back in that time, so I can't really um, compare that now um, to today. But um, either way, I'm very, very excited and interested to see what all six candidates have um, in store for us here today. And I will have to say though, I actually listened to the preview that was released yesterday once. I only listened to it once, and it's obviously not enough to judge yet, but it did give me a little glimpse of how the concept will be like, and I can already see some will maybe or very likely probably go more into my direction, you know? Um, this is now also like mentioned, um, given that it's right now only the pure songs, not the performance itself, I will also now for today give a pure rank on how I feel about just the songs, and the next week when the 10th episode comes around, I will um, also rank again then with the performance of that, okay? Last thing before we start, uh, two things actually, one we're going for this in um, the order of how it is on Spotify, you know, so the tracklist order from Spotify, and secondly, um, we are now using lyric videos, and given that the uh, song was released just around four hours ago or so, um, there are lyric videos yet from the channels I usually use, means I just randomly took those that were now done already, which means... I cannot guarantee you if the lyrics will be 100% correctly translated or if the line distribution and everything will be 100% correct. But for now, it's just my best option because I really don't want to wait any longer. I really want to check those songs out. I'm really excited for them. So if... But especially now, the groups like WJS and Luna, who I'm not really that big into yet and haven't listened to a lot from, when now, let's say... One member is showing it to scene someone, I will be like, oh wow, her voice is so great, and then it actually turns out it was another member, then it just happens, okay? That it just may happen, uh, so so don't you know, don't be too harsh with me on that. But whatever. Let's go into this with six songs to go through from all six um, artists. And the first one is Healing performing uh, Waka Boom My Way featuring Lee Young Jean. I'm also already kind of, you know, like there's a feature, but like, you know, no other, whatever. Okay, we'll see about that. Um, Healing really took a big, big turn for me throughout this tournament like mentioned her opening performance and her first one performance were good but i wasn't really flashed yet i was like okay i see i see, I see the talent within there but i need a performance to really showcase that and then after that she basically just kept delivering and delivering okay her so what performance remains the best performance of the season thus far for me her um unit stages both were excellent the, the one with minion was emotionally very very um Awesome to listen to um, while the dance performance then with WJS and was also very very strong and now her performance from yesterday CC uh, Bay was also a lot of fun to watch. Now I'm excited to see what she did here or basically chose for this final song because I will be honest with you, my favorite finale song from the Kingdom season last last year was finale show and proof of B2B. Majority because it really suited that theme. Because we're now basically in this final, okay? It's one versus it's one versus one. It's everybody versus everybody, you know, everybody's entered the ring, it's queens versus queens, who's coming out on top with the crown. So to really go for a concept that fits this royal regal theme and maybe go for something epic in the sound. That would definitely be something I would really enjoy. So let's see what Heulin, who also wrote and produced the song, is now giving us here. Let's have into it. First of the six final songs of Queen of Season 2, Heulin's Waka Boom, My Way. Let's go. Let's go! Ooh, this already sounds... Like a March song. Very cla Very classic March 
drum set. Oh, I can already picture the performance. Oh boy, the performance is going to be wild. This is such a strong instrumental intro. And a very long one too. Damn, 30 seconds. Oh, I love the little... Oh, the delivery on the one word that was very really cool, but... Ooh, this actually... This top line feels a bit... A bit, a bit Eastern now. Huh? Ooh... Oh, this pre chorus! Class tempo increase here. Give it a drop! Ooh! Very classic instrumental drop. Very classic chorus here. Oh, yeah, this definitely um, produced around the performance. I think the choreo for this is going to completely blow it out of the park. The feature now? I'm actually not sure. Oh, if it's still her. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know, but... Oh yeah, this beat picture is cool. Like, man, we have some strong drums in there. Then here is more cool down the electronic pre-chorus. I really love the production on this. The mixing here is very crisp, she sounds very clean. And his pre-chorus is just perfect. Mm. Yeah, this this pre-chorus and the chorus drop on stage, especially with the the visuals that we will be getting for it will be insane. Now, just listening to the audio itself, it's obviously like mentioned a very, very classy chorus sound, but it kicks. Okay, it sounds cool. Never mind. There she we go. <laughs> okay, that feature is just killer. Wait. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Wait, isn't isn't she the one who was on um it said bad bitch number with Zion? I think I remember the voice now their name. Yeah, I think so. Oh, this on man! I'm so excited for next week. It's insane. The stage is going to be everything. Oh, that delay! Damn, I got fooled. The high note was kind of in the background there, actually. Oh, the background moves now. I think she's going to be doing those live then. The high notes. Ooh. Yo. Okay. Okay. First thing I need to check. I'm sorry. Because I mentioned. Um, the, the, the lyric video here only had like heel in the center. So I was a bit confused. Because it, it says featuring. So I was like wait. Are we, you know, are we not going to you know. So I was like. Because I couldn't remember the name at first. Okay. Maybe it's like. Just a little bit of vocals here and there sprinkled in or whatever. But I think actually now that I've heard the voice again, isn't she the one um, with Zion? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and I, I remember 
The moment I heard that voice kick in, I was like, wait a second, I've heard this girl before. Lee Young Ji, who alongside BB and Zoyun dropped one of the best pieces last year, is that bad B number. I mean, look, that's just an insane feature right there. And it's actually quite surprising because um, it's, I think, the only feature we've seen in the final song. I don't re I don't know if like mentioned um the, the Queen um, season one um final songs um had a feature in there, but I think it's I think it's the only final song that, that took uh, a feature, which is quite interesting, right? Um but man, that feature was sick because um Heolin actually herself was a bit more Vocal focus throughout this actually, even the even the verse pictures. Um, but I'm actually very intrigued to see how they will be doing that live on stage. If Lee Young Ji will be there with her, that would be very very cool. Or if she does it on her own, I think she definitely has uh, has the talent to to flow that as well. But like the thing for me now is listening to this here, the way it is, it's like you just know it's meant to be performed. This song. It, 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 you just listen to it and you just know, alright, it already sounds good, but this will be, this will feel so much better, more electrifying, and just so, so good in every single way when you watch her perform it live. She's such a stage beast, okay? Like I mentioned, that's so what performance still remains the best in the season thus far. Um, so I feel like she, she really knew, alright, that is my biggest strength. I'm a stage beast, my live vocals are insane, my dancing and everything. I will make a song exactly around that. A big pumping powerful strong anthem sound you know with a bit of a march influence here in the beginning you know it really sounded a bit like a it's like a march song you know but still leave room for a lot of variety because like i mentioned the pre-chorus sound was gorgeous you know it's a long pre-chorus too so the first half is fully onto just a lovely vocal section then boom second part the bass tempo increases then boom the drop comes and like I mentioned the drop it's it's a very classic drop right it's a very a simple um, chorus sound design um because it is obviously like I mentioned meant to be performed that chorus is all will all be about the core and the performance and everything. So now just judging it by the audio itself, it's like mentioned very typical and nothing like new or anything. But like when you then watch it with the stage, it will just feel so so awesome. And that's that's really the thing right here though. And that's I think also the reason why we released these songs a week before the actual finale to basically already excite you for the for the stage and make you think, okay, how could the stage look like? And that song achieves just that, okay? Heolin's Waka Boom My Way does a 10 out of 10 job in making me excited to see it perform live. It just is a performance song. It's just the sound, the way it was produced, it is meant to be performed, which is why I'm now so excited to see Heolin kill it one more time in the finale, okay? She, like mentioned, with that So What performance, completely 180'd me. Um, it 180 me and I was like, wow, okay. I see now the talent this was a perfect showcase for that. Then she just kept delivering and delivering and waka boom. Um now even with just the audio like mentioned, um still sounds great and it's such a very strong fun sound, like mentioned, has a bit of an anthem feeling to it, which is very, very fitting for this final theme. Um that was awesome, okay? Leong G's verse, I mentioned, was killer, okay? And the fact that we then actually go back into the more pre-chorus sound, you know, with vocal focus before we then go back into the chorus again with a high note included there, which I think will be performed live for her too. Man. The song itself was already excellent by its by, on its own, but it will it would be so much better live on stage. So, Eolin did a fantastic job in not only showcasing her strengths within the song already, you know, because like mentioned, we still saw a great vocal showcase to hide it in the end as well. You already, just just by the audio, you still can tell, okay, she's fantastic, but once this song will be performed live, it will be... I can already picture myself looking like that. I'm so excited to see what she has prepared for us. So yeah, Eolin's Waka Boom My Way featuring Lee Young Ji. That was excellent. That was a very, very, very strong start, okay? It's a very classic sound and song itself, but what she does with it is just very, very fun and engaging to listen to, and I can't wait to see it live. Alright, very excellent opening into this album. Let's see if the rest can keep up. And up next is the artist that I think has produced the second best performance within Queendom 2 thus far, um, which is WJ's and Cosmic Girls performing Aura and um, they like mentioned their pantomime performance from uh, or pantomime performance from last week. In my opinion, alongside Heal and so what the best uh, women this season thus far. I'm now very excited to see what they do here. Um, like mentioned, won't be sh won't know all the names or like won't know all the voices and everything. So if the lyrics here aren't 100% correct and then I made mistake, voice for one another, 
may happen. We will see. Excited nonetheless. Um, like mentioned, the only out the only songs outside of Queen of I listened to from them were were the Unnatural album. Um, and there was especially Rewind in it, which I absolutely loved. So let's see what they do here with that final song. WJ Zen Aura. Let's check it out. All the orbits, planets, cosmos, the universe. I don't even Ooh, know. Very atmospheric opening. Because in the end, the queen. You can do strong drums now. Whistling is always a plus. Man, they know me. Whistling always gets me because it's so easy to do along, you know? We love the simple vocal picture here. We only have the whistling. This calm basis, everything is pulled up. Come on, the chorus is gonna be huge. Give me the drop. Come on. Oh, that should be tamer than expected. Where the vocals sound so good. They're such a vocally strong group, man. Ooh, the tempo is actually so interesting in this. The tempo is actually... Like, I love the way we play around from. Going to very slow. Bit more medium pace to fast for the chorus. So, but the vocals of this, they sound excellent. Very short second verse, though. You know what I mean? It's actually such a light drop. I really thought the, the drop would be a bit more, a bit more powerful. The song itself generally has a much more lighter vibe theme. But I think this the strong jumps. I was scared for a moment we ended there, but back in it with some high notes. Love that little pause there. The whistling though. It's very far in the background now, but it's still there. Such a such a formality. Okay. WJ's and Aura. Alright, alright, alright. So Huh, well, where do we start with this? So, the one thing that I think this song did absolutely excellent is built out at first drop. The way the intro was done, you know, this this like whispery intro there, you know, especially after the healing song to kick us off, it's a very calming moment, you know, to, to cool us down, to like really set the tone and atmosphere, okay? Like the build up to this drop is so, so long. It's so, so satisfying, actually, where you're like, okay, that drop is gonna be, you know, legendary. But the drop is actually a bit, a bit soft. You know what I mean? Like, we nearly spent 90 seconds building towards this drop. And then it just kind of keeps going, you know what I mean? I'm 
not sure yet if this will feel better on real listens or if the um if the drop itself will feel even cool on stage. Like mentioned, that's the same thing with the healing song. You know that the song will definitely be feel much stronger with a performance. I'm not sure if the same thing will apply here yet. But like mentioned, we have a lot of um, little moments in there for like breaks and everything that that may um be adjusted for choreo. But I don't know. The drop kind of went a bit to tame you know like it's obviously it works with the theme of the song with the um, theme of the general concept we were going for here um sonically but like make sure we spend 90 seconds scoring for this drop and after the chorus is done we only have like mentioned a short rap verse before we're already back into the pre-chorus and, and verse picture uh, and the pre-chorus and chorus picture so you know we have this very very long build up to the first drop and then the, the chorus actually comes around and while it sounds good it also kind of flies by and then like mentioned we have a very short second verse and then we're already basically back to that chorus this time around without that very long build up and there it feels even a bit more tamer because we didn't have the long build up this time a building tower did okay Hmm. Like mentioned, I the, the build up is excellent and the whistling is very, very enjoyable. Okay, like mentioned, I'm a huge whistling fan, you know, because everybody can do it. Everybody can whistle. I mean, not everybody, but usually everybody can, or like usually most people can do it. But this. It's such a fun melody, okay? Like, the song itself is definitely fun. The song itself is definitely enjoyable, nonetheless. You know, don't get me wrong there. But, like, um. The song kind of it's uh, now at least with the audio here for these for these big moments where we build towers to so long kind of just doesn't really you know explodes it kind of I don't know what I expected from it but like the split up was so long and lengthy and the pre chorus was also so so excellent especially vocally you know the higher higher here It's a full chorus though, like lyrically, so that's very good, and they sound great. I think I think that's the thing though here, um, because it's also only one section. Okay, so we only do one section chorus here. I feel like the chorus just. Yeah, I think, like, that's my problem here. The chorus itself is, is totally fine, you know, it sounds good and everything, but I feel like... I don't know, there's just something missing me for me for, in this chorus, and I can't, like, I can't even literally, like, pinpoint it out straight away to tell you what it exactly is. But we have this very long build-up, this long intro, and an excellent pre-chorus, and there is this short break moment, where I really don't know what I, what I expected, but it wasn't this. The, the chorus is, is good, it sounds great, but something is kind of missing for me. Maybe the stage will provide me with that, you know, maybe the chorus will be better on the stage. But like like mentioned, giving 90 seconds of the song to this build-up, to this first chorus, you expect something so, you know, that really like shakes it to the core, but it was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, but you know. Ah, I don't know what's missing here for me. I literally can't tell you right now. Like, I literally can't even tell you exactly now what I'm exactly, what it would have exactly done differently here. Maybe, because only one section, we, we do the chorus drop, like, a bit more stronger with, like, a strong vocal or anything, and then do this as the second section. I lit I don't know, I literally can't tell you right now. It's a bit weird to me right now, too, because... It, it, the chorus isn't bad or anything, the chorus is still good, but it kind of doesn't really fit into the rest of the song, at least to the build-up. Like mentioned, we do the chorus quickly again afterwards. Like the tempo and everything, it's, it's fun, you know? It's a mover. But it's still kind of... A bit too tame. The bridges keeps the energy going pretty well. The short bridge. The high note here is very good though. You yeah, like mention I thought at first, oh my god, don't end it here. That drop felt very good though. Maybe it was actually the drop before, the way we did the drop in the in the first half. Mm -hmm. This one was cool. Here we now have the second section, you know? Or either you call it the second part of the chorus or the outro. I think both works here. I 
actually, I think, more second part of the chorus. Ah, this is so hard to... Man, this is so hard to judge for me right now. Because, like, Mage, because he only song did such a classic chorus, there wasn't really much to say other than it being exactly that, because this South Coast usually always works. WJ's ends or chorus? I don't know. Ah. It's so weird, like, Mage, because I actually like the way we did the song, you know, this is whistling everything, it kind of has a very cool aura... Aura to it, you know, like I like the, the the sound and feeling of it, a bit dreamy, a bit spacey, a bit um like mentioned more of a table light att um, attempt um at this at this final um feeling, you know, something a bit more majestic basically, you know, maybe the visuals we really have with that, maybe they were really like go for a very a queen like regal uh, look while performing this, it would suit very well. But I don't know, this lengthy build up and then the chorus after that, it kind of it kind of felt flat to me. The chorus, it's, it's, the chorus is, it's like, man, I'm a bit in conflict with myself right now because I feel like the chorus is still good, but it still kind of misses something for me to really make the song stand out that way. Maybe the chorus is just really a bit too tame. Maybe the, maybe the tempo is still too slow or maybe the, the vocals are a bit too low in there. I really can't tell you right now. I will definitely re-listen to the song with more and then maybe next week I can tell you a bit um, better or if the song will feel stronger to me um, after a few more listens. But right now the chorus just misses something. Maybe something a little, maybe actually something bigger that I can't tell right now. To really, you know, to really have that big, satisfying feeling for me. Because that's the thing again. We spent 90 seconds building up towards that first drop. And then the drop comes around and it just kind of flies by. The drop doesn't really leave an impact on me. But the chorus still sounds good. Maybe it's actually the drop. Maybe it's actually the way we did the drop. That maybe we should have done the drop differently. Then the chorus would have worked better. Maybe there's like complete pause moment before then. Boom, just going in with this more lighter... Um, theme tempo there maybe they would have done the trick i can 100 percent tell you yet i could do tell you that wj's edge or is still very good you know i still very enjoyed for what it is um and that i hope that with more realisms and that with the performance next week it will um feel more satisfying to me i still very very much loved and enjoyed the vocal delivery here especially the hano city and were awesome so you know the song is so good the chorus or at least the drop kind of missed something for me Okay, enough time spent uh, philosophizing about um, about this song and what what I what I missed here, what maybe actually is already there and I just don't really feel it right now. We will see with more time because that's usually the thing how songs work. You know, sometimes the song would just need some time uh, to ground you. Either way, we are moving over to our third um, candidate, which is Kepler, also now confirmed already for a June comeback, performing the girls. Uh, can't turn me on can't turn me off i'm actually not sure right now um very funny that it like last performed the boys now they're performing the girls um i'm very excited to see how the full song will feel like it definitely sounded a bit more stronger in that very very short audio um preview i listened to yesterday like when you all listen to it once very excited you know i still have to check out the kepler mini album we still gotta do it we'll definitely be doing it before the comeback though um kepler like mentioned had a bit of an um up and down for me for all the tournament i think the water that performance was really really cool um then the uh, pool party performance was a bit i don't know was fun and creative but the song just kind of didn't hit for me then in the unit stage the vocal part was was cool and everything um while i then thought the um dance stage with um bbg like mentioned the song at least was kind of bit too uneventful well, then the boys' performance, in my opinion, was definitely the best to date. So it was kind of a bit of, okay, we started strong, then we went a bit more low flame, but then they went up again. So let's see if they can keep that momentum up with their new own song, Kepler's. The Girls, plus additional lyrics that I can't tell you 100%. Let's check it out. It's Can't Turn Me Down. Oh, actually, oh, it's not a very gritty and dark. It actually feels a bit more playful now. Ooh, but I love the attitude. Ooh, I love this cool down pre chorus here. Tempo increase now. Oh! 
Woo! Very classic first course hop here. Come on, give me a second one. Oh, oh this is good though. Oh, never mind. Yeah, okay. Okay, very simple chorus, but I'm digging it. Ooh. Ooh, okay, I'm digging that. The flow is great here. With those shouting rhymes. Ooh, what a lengthy second verse though. Now the verse pitch is also much more gritty and dark again. I like that. We played around a bit with that with the theme. Ooh, the extra vocals now here. Oh, I'm feeling this a lot. Oh! Oh, this is so catchy! Oh, this is so cool, actually. No. I was scared for a moment the song ends here. Oh! Oh, the dance break that is going to be brutal. Oh, boy. That dance break is gonna be... Oh! Come on, give me the chorus again, please. Don't end it now. Woo, this instrumental boy! What's it still the notes? Sounds like it. If you really go to hold that live, that would be insane. Ooh. Oh boy. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. All right. Damn. That is a lot to unfold here. It's such a long song too. Oh, okay, so I definitely have one critique point that I will go to, but honestly, I'm majority like from I'm majority positive on this, and I think like at least audio wise, I think like listening to this like from now the pre song we listen to this far, I think it's audio wise my favorite thus far, and this song will one hundred percent be going wild on stage. That dance break, Eddie on is going to be crazy. Okay, capitalist girls can't turn me down. There's a lot to unfold in this. Okay. For such like basically very long, very full produced song. There were moments in this where I was like first okay. Never mind. Oh yeah. Oh 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 okay. Like we have a lot of very, very cool sections in this. And I think that's definitely the the, the biggest strength of the song straight away. There were so many little moments in the song, so many flow sections or rhyme sections that really stand out. Okay? This very, very strong cool intro. The first verse picture is awesome, which I mentioned actually kind of changes to the intro sound with a bit more of a playful part. The pre-chorus is excellent, a very long one, does the perfect job of getting um, working that drop. Then we have a totally different second chorus to the first chorus. You know, the first chorus felt a bit empty, but still worked for me as an instrumental chorus. But like I mentioned, we added lyrics to the second chorus, which actually makes, like, that's the thing. The first chorus feels very empty because it has like very little lyrics and it's a classic instrumental chorus. But because we then do in the second part the first half differently, that makes the first half of the first chorus actually feel so much cooler because it's the only time we actually do it that way. You know? That's like, that's like really, really dope. That like really, really makes the, uh, um, I actually think, yeah, the final chorus actually did go back up again, I think, to it. But it still kind of makes it feel, feel cooler immediately because, you know, like, oh, it's not going to be, you know, you're not going to be hearing this exact chorus now here. Again, copy-paste it straight after that, right? Then, the, the, the second part of the chorus is so cool. 
can't turn me down. Can't turn me down. That sounds so cool. That's such a very, very catchy, cool delivered flow there. And then we get to the second verse. It's a very long one, and we play so, so cool in there, okay? Like the way we do these shouting um, rhymes in there, you know, to really make the rhymes um, stand out a little bit more. And the way we also like, mentioned it is louder, louder, and the pre chorus and everything. There were just so many moments in this that immediately after the first season, I could say, like, oh wow. That part was especially cool, like, wow, that's a highlight for me. And that's always great, you know, when you listen to a song, you immediately out the world, like, oh, wow, what's my favorite part? You actually can't decide straight away, you know? That's a cool feeling, that's a cool, cool thing. Um, the dance break, obviously, damn, like, that's such a insane instrumental there, and it's going to be wild on stage. Um, for, for the audio listen experience, it might be, it might become a bit... I know it's a very long one, like Minch, but it's, it's totally done fully for the performance, so that would just feel much better when you watch it live. The only thing I would criticize here is actually the bridge. And not the, not the, not the sound or anything of it, but because it's actually a short one. Because, like Minch, we do such a long pre-chorus that this bridge feels like it's only half. Like here, I expect like once again to I'm so good, I'm so good, or just a different rhyme, but instead we immediately jump over to this high note. You know what I mean? That's weird. Like you would totally expect in that moment the way the lining was done. Okay, we just ramp this again and then boom, we do another um do another section to build towards the high note. Because we did it or like we did exactly that length for the pre-course too. So the bridge here after this long instrumental break kind of just feels like it got cut in half. Maybe because it didn't want to go over four minutes, maybe? You know? That's a bit weird to me. Like, it just doesn't really feel satisfying. So good, I'm so good, good. I'm so good, I'm so good, good. And then we continue that, and then boom, we go into the chorus again. You know what I mean? It just feels so... Yeah, yeah, that bridge, that bridge is way too short here. That bridge definitely needed another half, or at least the way we did that second line. When we do such a simple English lyric there, you feel like, okay, we're just going to, to either repeat it again in the, in the fourth part of this bit, or we just do a different part, but it still rhymes on that, and then we continue to the second half. That's how you, we usually do this for bridges or pre-choruses. So to then immediately jump into the, into the high note here was a bit like, wait, what? Why are we here already? Where's the, where's the other half of the bridge, you know? That's the only complaint point I have. Because otherwise, the song... The chorus still hits, okay? Like this part here, you know, where that high note... I'm not, I'm not sure if she will actually be holding it for that long, but the way we like hold that high note now digitally and just keep it going in the background while the beat goes crazy is awesome. Such a great finale sound. Can't turn me down. Can't turn me down. Can't turn me down. That's such a cool ending, though. The bridge is definitely too short for me. Definitely needed another half, but the ending still absolutely kicks. And again, the pre-chorus is absolutely excellent. Okay. That, that, like mentioned, this fade out effect is in the background, taking on any type of bass, you know, to really focus on the vocal here. Great first half here, and then down there, down there, louder, louder. Sounds so good. Then, like mentioned, this chorus drop. Very classic, very simple, empty lyrics here. We like it first, okay? It works solely as an instrumental chorus, and then we will like mention go back to this excellent second part. It's just very cool to listen to. But then the second verse, though, like mentioned, it's way grittier, way more aggressive. That's so cool. Harder. The way we the way we decide to just put that shouting um shouting element over the rhymes to have the rhymes stand out of the way is very excellent. This little do moment you know too. 
But like mentioned, the verse picture now sounds also very differently in the in the in the attitude compared to the to the first one. It's so cool. And then we go back to the pre-chorus. Outside of that bridge, and that. Oh, but then, actually, like mentioned, the the, the, the chorus drop here now. This time around. Then these cool lyrics implemented instead of the instrumental section. The instrumental all sounds totally different. Like every chorus is so different from one another. Every chorus sounds different. Every chorus is done differently. Like I mentioned, first and third are a bit similar, but it's still felt a bit different. Like different to me. Outside of that bridge. That I mentioned kind of had rush, and all I think they really just didn't want to go over the four minutes there. And obviously, like I mentioned, the, the, the instrumental break will on on own listens or like out of the poem may feel a bit too long and dragging. I will see about that. But outside of that, Kepler's The Girls is actually insane. Like actually so damn good. Okay. 100 percent my favorite yet of today. Now that we've reached halftime. Absolutely. Just so good. The verses are so excellent. The verses are very different from one another and sound fantastic. The pre-chorus is perfect. The choruses are very different from one another. Like mentioned, we still keep that uh, 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 part in the second half nonetheless, which is extremely catchy and so cool to do along. Like mentioned, we'll go so hard on stage as well with the choreo and the dance machines that uh, Kepler are. So already on the audio, this feels absolutely insane, but you just know already that with the dance break coming there at the end, it's going to be even bigger and better on live stage. So Kepler, in my opinion, with the girls can't turn me down, knocked it out of the park. This thing is a banger, okay? Thus far, now that we've listened to the first three songs, now that we've reached half time, it's my favorite. Thus far, my ranking from just the audio listening... Like mentioned, maybe with the performances, um, on top of that, it will be maybe a bit different. Or like maybe the, the ranking then will change. But now when we just listen to the audio, the former ranking would be Kepler on 1, Halen on 2, and WJZ on 3. That was insane. That was awesome. Okay, and we are already at 40 minutes, but I won't split this into two parts or anything. We just keep going, which is why we're now moving over to BBG's Red Sun. Just had Red Sun yesterday with Rave Code, so interesting here. Um, let's see if this um, goes into levels of Dreamcatcher's Red Sun, yeah, one of their best B-sides. But funnily enough, I listened, like mentioned to the preview once, and it, it was really like I listened to a G-Fred song. And I'm honestly a bit scared now that this will be just a, just a G-Fred song. You know, with the classic instrumental um, pop sound and everything, without anything special to it. I really hope that won't be the case. Let's not waste any more time and get into it, okay? BBC's Red Sun, big fan of Order Girls. But please give me something exciting. Please give me something fresh and, you know, special. Please. Let's go. It's a very long song, too. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, didn't, didn't actually read that they got this song from Source Music. Like, that it actually was a different song at one point. Yeah. Lyrics do fit the, the journey here. <sighs> when he has lovely voice. Oh, but it's actually such a nice, lovely, jazzy tone to it. I'm thinking the humming in the background, too. Oh! Ooh, this this will be a lot of fun to watch live. I think they will have a very fun choreo for this. Oh, that's what that's a prop chorus. Hey, this is a lot of energy actually. This, this is a G fresh song 100%, but uh, I'm already in a conflict here. I will talk about it in a moment. Hey, I will have a lot of fun with this on release. I'm telling you that already. Oh, this sounds so good here. 
OMG is really becoming a big bias for me. Like, even outside of BB Sheen G-Friend. She's in YouTube, apparently my G-Friend bias is. Like, OMG has really been growing on me. But Jimby also not great here. Still not a big fan of the chorus transition here. Like, it doesn't really feel clean. You know, like the way we transition over, but it sounds cool, like the chorus itself, afterwards. That second section though, fully capturing the classic different energy. I love lot of Jesse influence in this. Oh, all the energy in this song. difficult for me right now. I get it to it in a moment. Ah, oh, lovely instrumental here. Damn, that, that thing was long, I'm telling you. Okay. Ah, uh, this is now actually... A bit difficult for me. I tell you why. As I said beforehand, I listened to that very short little preview bit from the video yesterday. Then I was like, wow, that just sounds like your absolute typical G Friend song from back in the day. And for me, that was kind of like the conflicting moment for me was like, I love the girls. I love Baby G, I love G Friend, I love that sound, but I was kind of like, uh, I would have loved to see something new, something fresh, something exciting, something like mentioned that really suits. Like mentioned, I'm a bit of a sucker for this idea of, or like, of basically a song that goes into the direction of Lion or Finale Show and Proof. You know? Both Lion and Finale Show and Proof, Letter of B2B from last year's Kingdom, like mentioned, both really, really embraced and fully went into the idea. One versus everybody, Finale, the crown is up for stakes, we do an epic, royal, regal theme, sound, look, everything, and go with that, you know? So I kind of was like, hey, after seeing how BBG killed with Apple, which also went more into this bit of a royal theme, I was like, I would love to see something like this too. So when I then saw, okay, it would probably perform a song that really would go into a very client's G-Friend the question, I was like, it will sound good, but it just kind of probably won't be anything too new. And now after listening to the song, I'm kind of still in that same boat, because honestly, I love the song. I love the song, okay? Like mentioned, I haven't known and uh, been into G Friend now for a long time, only for, for less than half a year, right? We, we didn't really uh, go through everything up until January and February, you know, so I haven't been really having this journey right now. It's this, similar actually to yesterday's Luna Butterfly performance where I was already like, hey, people that have been here since the beginning, it's actually also similar to the Town for the Moon, like the, the first round performance, you know, if you've been with the girls since day one and then watch a performance and listen to that song, you will, you get, you will get emotional, right? It would be like now, if in five years forward to me, Dreamcatcher would perform one of their ballads in, in this type of show. You know, I would be I would be sobbing, you know? So I don't really have that emotional bond in and everything. Well, I can totally see why a lot of people will really love this song. Especially because it's such that classic G-Friend energy. 
And like mentioned, I love the song. I love the song. It's it sounds awesome. They sounded absolutely gorgeous throughout the entire thing. The only thing I can actually say about the song is that I like afterwards now I can't even really tell you like how the song like really was constructed. Like I mentioned, the only thing I wasn't a big fan of uh, was the way the chorus transition was done. I felt a bit abrupt, a bit just not really clean in the production there. But other than that, there's just it just it's just a great song to listen to. And I will have a lot of fun to re-listen to this. But like mentioned, the only thing I'm like can't even like really tell you right now after one listen is how the how the co how the construction was. It kind of felt like, especially at the ending section, kind of felt like oh, is this to the bridge? Is this the third verse? Are we in the chorus again and everything? You know, that was a bit not confusing or anything. But like you would definitely need more read listens to really understand how the construction here went. But this now like mentioned this conflicting situation for me. One part of me loves the song. Classic g friend energy in a very classy, jazzy influence, actually, you know, making it kind of stand out that way still. And just a lot of fun to listen to. The other, the other part of me goes, hmm. It's like mentioned, due to it being such a very classic feeling, it just kind of feels like a song you could have totally seen as a B-side on one of their albums, one of their old albums. Because like mentioned, I think I've actually read that Red Sun was actually uh, meant to be a G-Friend song at one point, or maybe a BBG song, not, never mind, because it was source music. I think this was supposed to be a G-Friend song at one point, you know, because like mentioned, um, just recently I saw that Asper Savage has been written like, even before Asper was formed, I think, right? So many companies have so many songs written and produced years before they actually see the light. Or even know which group that will be signed. It's the only thing in K-pop. You know, producers write songs and everything. And then uh, companies can buy that song from the producer to give them to their group, right? So we would not be surprised if Red Sun has been laying around for a long time now. And they said, okay, like we got the rights to it. Let's do it, okay? Like that's my only complaint, basically. We are here in the finale of the show, and I kind of would have loved to see, like, mention something that really embraced that, embraced that status. And, like, mention why the lyrics kind of fit into it. One part of me is just like, man, I love the song and everything, but it just kind of really doesn't fit into it. But then, like, mention the other side of me is like, okay, who the fuck cares? The song is awesome, the song is everything, you know? Who cares then about what type of genre it is? It just sounds great. That's my only little conflict here right now. Would love to know your opinion on that, because, again, I love the song, it sounded fantastic and everything, but it just kind of, especially in comparison now to the other songs, especially the Heal In and Capital song, that will like be so powerful and strong for the stage and everything. This just feels like it just doesn't really suit this the moment we're in right now. The song is awesome, it's fantastic, it's like, that's the thing, it's, 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 it's a wonderful song, I will have so much fun listening to this. But this one part of me is like, man, it just kind of really doesn't fit in you too much. It's more like mentioned worth a very fun, jazzy little B-side, you know? An excellent B-side, but kind of just, it's like, it kind of feels like, you know, you take a concept album, let's say you do a summer album, and then you throw in a ballad that feels like it was made for winter, you know? Like that's, that's like, remember um, Aspas Forever? Because we already talked about Aspas a few minutes ago. Um, that was released in February. Like what? You release a winter Christmas ballad in February. What the hell? Who, who cares about this now? Just imagine we do a summer album and throw a, a, song, a song like that into there. It might be good. It might be really strong in its own way and everything. But it just kind of really doesn't suit the moment we're in right now. If you would have released it in a Christmas album. Boom. Perfect. Everybody would love it immediately. That's my only little conflict I'm having right now. L looking forward to the stage a lot, I think it will absolutely kill, and I think it will be very emotional because, like mentioned, it has a classic G Friends sense in it, and it will definitely make for an emotional stage. And I would not be surprised if one of the three girls would cry while performing it. It's a very long um, vocal focus, a long emotional song, basically. But I have one part of me is a bit like. <sighs> Do, should have done maybe something else, and maybe suits it suits a theme a bit more. But maybe that's just really that part of me that just really wants to see another line or finale show improve. I think that's just my problem here. Oh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. How, how you feel about this. If you also are like, hey, I also love the song, but I agree with you. I think they should have... I think they should have saved this up for, for a later album and do something else for this that kind of suits the theme more. If you're like, hey, who the heck cares, bro? It's an awesome song. Just, just enjoy it for what it is. And I still definitely do that. But then I obviously got a rank, okay? I know obviously got a rank, the songs and everything. And thus far, I think it's contesting with Healing for two. I think Kepler still won. WJ's and us for on four for me. I'm sorry. Um, and then BBG around three or two for now. 
We do have two more to go through, but we're already in over 50 minutes. Oh boy, this is going to be a long one, but I'm here for it. We have Luna with Pose. And that song sounded dangerous, okay? That song sounded... Oh, okay. Let's not waste any more time. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Let's get freaking into it. Luna! Pose. Oh. Actually, funnily enough, saw a, a video where someone made a red velvet pose. How would Luna sing this double song? But I got the wrong pose. Let's check it out. It's short though. Let's see how they implement the members. Pretty base, let's go. Oh, this beat. Oh. That's an interesting extra voice there. I love how the pictures above the also looks so funny, cheerful, but the song is banger. Ooh. Oh, this pre chorus. Ooh. Ooh, I'm digging the sound picture. But with what did they mix this? Like the voices. Oh, but Ooh, that line. I find these ad-libs so weird. Why is there many boys in there? Yo, but this pre course though. Oh? Oh, the extra vocals here, though. Oh, keep it the chorus now. We're taking off, I guess. Drops here. Oh. Ooh, that part is catchy. First thing I definitely gotta check, I want to see that line again. Which one was it? Well, of, <laughs> the mic's in the way. Follow, follow my flow, wave voice, Luna's wave. To make it okay, that translation not that good, but still kind of sound cool. Mm. Honestly, the first impression is that I like definitely some things in there, but I feel like I'm not the Biggest fan of the end product, and I'll tell you why. So, obviously, like we had enough for some of the other songs before that, already just BBG before this. Actually, the, the, the concept and idea behind the sound and like the lyrics and everything is actually not that, like, that bad or like that um, unfitting for this finale, you know, like, oh, it's a finale, let's try a pose together, you know, let's, let's, make, let's make this moment, everything, blah, blah, blah. But, like, the, the one thing that, like, bit throws me off in this, outside of, like, mentioned the fact that we have these these cute-ass pictures up there while we have this, this way more heavy sound. I really did not enjoy, and that's just, once again, one of my preferences, I think we just yesterday had with the Butterfly performance, too. I'm just not a big fan of involving 
voices and vocals that aren't the actual artists and mix it into the song. Like yesterday we like for Butterfly, we had like which is very high pitched voice in the chorus, which is part of the song and everything. And this time around we even have a male voice in it where I'm like I don't know, it's 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 it just sounds weird. I hear the cheering and everything, you know. Like the beat is is bang, okay? The beat is a banger. But alone this 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 pose, you know, this is highly edited and everything. And like obviously it's a style, you know. I'm just not the biggest fan of the style. That's like once again, it's similar to, to Butterfly now actually. I think this will go very hard on stage. I think this will be a very enjoyable performance, just like Butterfly's performance yesterday was. But it will ultimately just feel not as good to per to me personally, because there are just parts of the song that just aren't really my thing. And that's not the thing, right? Some may love it. And that's awesome for them. I'm just a bit like, mm, yeah, you know. Like that's that's that, that that's our personal preference thing to what it comes down. Obviously, it it's it's a cool idea and it like mention works as a style and everything, but it just we do gotta say though because that's not a thing. The worst the word the way things in the song I really enjoy, but the end product kind of ends up being not one hundred percent enjoyable to me because of some things that are in there that I do not enjoy. But the parts that are really good are absolutely amazing. Okay, like the flow in the verses and the rap line they delivered. Okay, they ate. You know, as we as we often love to say. Okay, that's what I mean up though, right? The ad libs. The ad libs in the flow here and there. Why do we have a male voice in that? It just throws me off. It's just I don't know. It just doesn't it just doesn't really work for me. It just kinda sounds out of place, you know? Like again, I, I understand what we're going here for. We have to we have to cheering in the beginning, the cheering at the end. It obviously is supposed to resemble um, that feeling of a crowd around them, right? I think it's maybe what we will be seeing for the for the stage too, where they have like a big amount of backup dancers behind them, and they would be like, you know, maybe actually make the top of circle and everything, right? Uh, with them like performing in the middle of it. But it just audio wise still just doesn't do it for me, okay? Like it works for the idea and that way you can obviously say like, hey, that's that's cool, you know, they, they execute an idea pretty cool with that, you know, like um, having the public around them and then everybody goes like, oh yeah, and blah, 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 you know. But like audio-wise it just, it isn't hitting for me, just because it's my preference and that's obviously a bit unfortunate, you know. Yeah, it's a bit, uh, I don't know. Again, their flow thoughts here are awesome. Again, the, the ad-libs are just... Now though, the pre-chorus is perfect. The pre-chorus is perfect. That's the thing again though. We use this this edited voice with the camera action pose and everything. Why not have a member do it? Well, because it suits uh, just the idea we go for for this song and everything, but it just isn't for me. I just don't really like having voices that aren't the actual group with just these very deeply edited EDM voices in there. I'm just not a fan of them. It then obviously affects my enjoyment. The chorus itself... Yeah, yeah, I think they now combine all the voices together again with this shouting background audience, basically. Hmm. The sound itself is cool. The beat is banging. The bass is sick. I, this is so cool. Yeah. The song is basically 50 50 for me. Then apples are breaking there. <laughs> pre chorus is 10 out of 10. Pre chorus is 10 out of 10. The pre chorus is perfect. The bridge, let me go to the bridge again. Wait, actually, no, we. we... I think you can call this the second part of the chorus, actually. That sounds cool, you know. Because we only have, to only have actual member voices performing here. The melody of it is cool. Like I mentioned, the beat is still kicking, right? 
That melody's cool, this. That's a cool bass line, right? This party is epic. They sound great here. The, 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 the dancing for it must be awesome too. Maybe the song will be much better live again. But... This part is also awesome. I walk like na na na. I talk like na na na. That part is awesome! So the song is obviously very short, that's another thing, but I think actually we had good stuff in there. But like we actually didn't even do the chorus another time, which in this case is actually not that bad because that's not a problem for me, okay? I love Luna and they have like mentioned dropped songs that I so adore a lot. Like mentioned Paint the Town, one of my favorite releases from last year. Um, Dance on my own, one of actually my favorite B-sides from last year. It was like the one B-side especially in that album where I said like, wow, that B-side is special, I really, really love it. And like mentioned... Same thing for this tournament. Butterfly just really didn't, the performance yesterday didn't really do for me because I just wasn't the biggest fan of the song. But the rest of the tournament was everything. The Paint the Town performance, insane. The Shake It performance, awesome. Creative, delivered the song, perfection. Um, great showcase of being able to do different concepts. The unit stage is very cool, okay? The vocal stage, like mentioned, was a bit, you know, tame, but like still very enjoyable. The stage with ENG, perfect, okay? And like my butterfly came around. So for me, I think the, the thing for me with Luna is when they do a concept that I personally really enjoy, like just do music in a way that I really enjoy it, then it's one of my favorite things. Yeah. When they do a specific thing that I really, really love, and then they execute it to perfection, you know, like that's the thing. Everybody's preferences and concepts you love a lot. And when Luna does it, from like stuff that I really like, then it's a banger. Okay, and then I'm like, oh my god, this is this is everything, okay? But I also like mentioned have parts or like do things like mention now, like mention butterfly, this is my title song. Um where then just like just like it would be the case for any other group, where it would be like you know, even my favorite group, Dreamcatchers, done songs that are like not bad for what they are, but I'm just not a fan of the sound itself, so they are whatever to me, right? Like the voices itself and everything can carry that. And this is now the thing with Luna's post because there are things in there that I love. The pre-chorus is perfect. The bridge section is I like na 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 na. I talk like na na na. Da 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 da. That sounds perfect. That part of the bridge perfect. The pre-chorus perfect. The flow in the verses, especially the second part, especially in the second verse, is ten out of ten. But then. We have like mentioned this voice stuff coming in there, which I'm not a fan of. You know, the, like the way we do the ad there, the way we do the drop of the chorus is a bit weird. The chorus also itself, where the, where the sound is kicking, the way we do the flow and lyrics in there does really kick for me. This song is a 50-50 for me, and that's a bit unfortunate. Because, like, obviously, if you enjoy it, if you love it a lot, hell yeah. Fantastic, okay? Like, yet, obviously, it's once again, like, my, my personal enjoyment here right now, where I'm like, there are things in the song that I really love, but other things that I'm not a biggest fan of. And now I obviously can't judge yet if those, if the negative half will make the song unlistenable for me, where I will and be like, okay, I can listen to, like, here and there, but, like, not a lot. Or if the other side is so good that I will, like, you know, just get used to that other part and just accept it to then enjoy the other half. That's something time will show, and, like, mentioned, maybe with the performance, it will be better. And much more satisfying for me. But now, like I mentioned, can only give you my thoughts and only break the song down and tell what I really loved and what I didn't. I tell you now what I loved and what I did not. And I would really look forward to see how your thoughts are. Like I mentioned, obviously, there are always parts of a fandom that will love everything. You know, they will love everything their group points out. Um, but there are obviously also people that also don't always, always enjoy everything, right? You know, it's a, sometimes your favorite group or sometimes an artist that you really enjoy and love just doesn't do something that you really enjoy, but that's okay. You know, that's music. We always got to try new things out. And they tried something here. Um, and parts of it worked for me. Parts of it didn't. And that's okay. Luna's pose. It still has a cool idea behind it. It still has a cool attitude. The verses are, the verses are fire. Out of the athletes. The chorus is a bit... I don't know. It doesn't really care for me. But the pre-chorus and the bridge are especially fantastic. 
it will be hard to it will be definitely a thing of time to see how the song will grow from year to time um, there are like mention sections there that I will love on every listen there will be parts in there that I won't enjoy throughout unless I get a bit more used to them and that's something I can definitely do right there are sections some of my favorite songs that I don't really fully enjoy all the time but I like just get used to them because the rest of the songs just that good where I then just don't really care for it anymore maybe it will be the same thing here and maybe it will happen with the live performance next week but my first impression now for Luna's post is that it's probably a 50-50 for me where do I rank this in now, actually? Whew. Definitely not above um, Kepler Heal in and PBG. So now it's a... Now it's a battle basically between WJSN and Luna from B44. Because, like, WJSN had actually... The song itself it was really good, but the courses didn't really hit for me. And I think I love the individual parts I love in Luna's song more than the parts of the WJSN song. But like the WJS song doesn't really have that many parts in it that I don't really enjoy too much. I'll think about it again in a moment. But for now, it's either fourth or fifth place. Unfortunate, because I like mentioned first round they were my first place, second round they were my second place, they were my one place in the dance unit. But this time around, just like last year they were butterfly, it's unfortunately not one hundred percent cup of tea. And now, we have one more song to go through. Are we going to reach 90 minutes? Maybe. I don't know. I don't care. We're going through this in detail. I give everything its time and deserved talk. We have now reached the final. Which is Brave Girls' Whistle. And now, yesterday, like mentioned, we had a very, very long conversation about how I thought that we should have done that Cinderella story portrayal and everything of the song, like with the song for the finale. I then did see people say this was the best round to do it because they weren't sure if they would reach the final because they already had ranked sixth place and if they do it again they would be out you know such a shitty rule honestly they're like what the hell you know? but um they did do it but I ultimately just did not enjoy the song choice for it and i thought it kind of did not give me as big of an impact as it could have been so my idea, like mentioned, would have been to really do that story and write a song about and do this epic type of um, high note filled finale. Now we get Whistle, and from the short portion I heard in the preview, it sounded like a very classic summer song. Now I will wait and see how the full thing sounds like, but if we really just again do a very, very typical summer song... <sighs> Then it would just once again be a case of me saying, man, the girls are talented and everything, but like, the songs are the problem probably then. We will see now though, let's wrap this up. The sixth and final song of the Queen of Finale lineup, Brave Girls, and a new song, Whistle. Let's check it out. Of course, we have a whistle in there. I mean, would have been weird or not. Digging the bass, good tempo. Oh, we have that soft summer guitar in there now. I like the way we keep the tempo though. Like the flow really suits the tempo too. Well, I think the second part will be a bit more... I think... Oh, give me a second half, come on. It's a, it's a party song, though. Breakdown for the second verse. Mm. 
Like mention what I really like is how actually we have so many lyrics. Like we really really keep up uh, uh, lyrically with the pace of the song and with the with the beat. Pre-chorus is very classic. So another thing is like mentioned. The song is fucked. Like mentioned, it's a very classic summer song though. So it just kinda is. I'll do it again, okay? It just isn't really new, you know? Bridge build up. Oh, we now actually cut the first half. Okay, that's interesting. Ooh, the vocal still. How was it nearly four minutes long? Why are there so many songs in K-pop that just fly by and afterwards you're like, what? Okay. So, the preview was not lying. It is a very classic, upbeat, summer party dance song. And now the thing is obviously. Again, it, 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 I don't like to be in this situation because, again, I feel like many, many that have not watched every single Queen of Performance will think I hate Brave Girls, but that's like mentioned not the case, you know. This entire tournament, why they say tournament? Actually, it is some, actually, no, it's not really a tournament because we don't have eliminations, but this entire show was my introduction to them, okay? Like mentioned, I heard about the, the Cinderella story last year, but did uh, not catch it really or check the any music videos. I just didn't have the time for that. Um, so this was my first view on Brave Goods as group and their sound. And the thing for me is now it's actually a bit similar to the BBC, the BBC situation because one part things the song is good, you know. The song is good. Like, I can't really say the song is bad. Or, like, what's actually that the song is just a very well produced song. It's a perfect summer title song, right? Like, there's 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 no issues with that. I have no I have no issues with that whatsoever. I can't at all criticize the song for for its quality. Quality of the song is great. Chorus is catchy. I said it earlier for the WJZ Aura song. Whistling always does it for me, even though the whistling is this time actually a bit more in the, in the background instead of like foreground, but it's okay. Um, and it's actually, like mentioned, it's such a very, very strong tempo all the way through. Okay, like especially like mentioned the way we have this very, very fast bass all the way through for the verse. And we really keep up with that. You know, it's a very energetic song in that way. You know, it's not one of these commerce, like what it's not one of these songs that have like a very calm verse picture and then go very strong and uh, energetic for the chorus. In the end again, no. This time it's 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 an it's a non-stop party, okay? It's a non-stop party. It's a non-stop um, summer party song. So in the quality sense, I can't really complain here, right? It's still a good song, and I will I will I will enjoy listening to it because that's what I'm going to be doing up until next week. I will just listen to the entire album up and down, okay? I will do that, you know, to just to see for songs, especially like to be James Aura or Luna's Pose, how do we grow on me? If the parts that I not really fully enjoy within there will be like uh, you know. Still feel good, or if they like grow me a bit. And now the thing for like mentioned Brave Goods song is like if I now compare it as example to to Luna's um, Pose and WJ Sense Aura, which are now the two songs that rank the lowest for me thus far. There was no part in the song that made me go, "Oh, I'm not a fan of that." The song for what it is and the concept that it went for is idio. It's an idio upbeat summer fun party dance song. Now the issue, just like I said for BBG, is not only is it like mentioned because I'm just I just would have loved to see a song like that, like Lion again or Financial Proof. It doesn't really fit this entire um 
theme here, you know, like this this finale, it's everybody versus everybody, you know, this epic type of royal vibe, you know, I want to, I want to hide the high notes, the emotions, the powerfulness, all that kind of stuff, this really doesn't suit India, but also, because it's a song that they, it's, it's just, a, it's just another Brave Girl song, that's what I'm trying to say, it's quality, it's good for what it is, but it just kind of doesn't stand out to me. It just kind of doesn't have something in there that makes me go, you know, it's good. It's enjoyable. And like I mentioned, the girls are talented. Their voices are great. We had great, we had a great high note there at the end too. But the song just kind of, the, the song is just kind of nothing too special to me because like I mentioned, upbeat, energetic summer party songs. They're like sand corns at the beach, you know, there are hundreds of them. So if you do that type of song, then you obviously need to do something massively mind-blowing to really have that song really blow me away. Or like mention the song is good, it's just, it just also just isn't anything special or too crazy or new or innovative. Because basically, if we now look back to the tournament itself, why do I still say tournament? This show, it's extremely similar to the first round performance, because both... Chimat Baram and Rollin are very, very similar to the song. Or like at least the idea behind them and the concept of them. That's that's like that's my issue with Brave Girls as far. And that's why like mentioned also the Red Sun performance yesterday they didn't really hit for me. I feel like they have the talent, but I feel like the songs they're going for just just aren't the perfect way to showcase it. It's like I'm trying to find a good metaphor here. It's like um Basically let's say you're a good footballer. I mean, now I mean, no soccer, but it's football, not soccer. Ugh. Um, you're a good footballer, and then they decide because you um, aren't bad with uh, with your hands to put you in the handball team instead. They're like, hey, I still can do this, but like, if I do it in a different way, or like, if I perform in a different uh, in a in a, in a different environment, I could be even better and be even you know make even more impact that way and i feel like that is the thing for brave girls now again obviously there are people that love this type of sound and that's why i do not complain at all if these people love this the song and everything and like regular that's the first because they just love the sound and concept and everything but for me as somebody who where really needs a lot to happen for me to say damn this this summer song is like one of the best out there it just isn't happening here where i'm like now again in this conflict where i'm like hey the song is good, it's enjoyable, but how do I rank this in comparison to the rest? Like earlier I mentioned with the BBC song, it's 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 a very classic Chief French sound, it's a fantastic song and everything, but it's kind of something they've been doing for a long time though, so it doesn't really feel special. It doesn't really feel like it belongs in the final. That's what I'm trying to say here. Obviously, you want to do what you're best at. While obviously Brave Goats majority goes for the Sprite Upbeat Summer song, which I think it obviously works for them. Like mentioned, it's not bad, but I feel like they could do even better with um, with other sound concepts and, and other ideas. Um, I would expect for the finale to really go all out in a way for something that not only fits that theme of the finale, but also just something that like showcases everything perfectly. And I think the song Nino showcases the vocals they have perfectly. Like mentioned, Min Young's stage with healing was everything. That was vocally so good. When I think, like mentioned, she did a high note here at the end. It just could have been showcased even more, right? And the choreo will probably be fun. And the, 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 the chorus is fun too and everything. But it just isn't... It just isn't flashing me. That's what I'm trying to say. I just don't have that wow feeling from, from the songs Brave Girls is performing. Again, Min Young Sage wowed me. Unji stage wowed me. Both of those unit stages where they performed songs and which is so drastically different to the to the typical sound they do, absolutely flash me. I was like, wow, these girls are awesome. And I can still say now that the girls are awesome, but it's like it just doesn't really feel like anything special. This perform this song right here is a good summer song, but it's just one of many. You know, if they would have like mentioned took that took that Cinderella song to try and portray. Work a song around that that both lyrically plays into it and in the sound, which means epic vocals, epic classical instrumental with 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 piano, violin, and such a whole orchestra basically. Then it would have been a wow moment for me. Now, Rave Ghost's whistle is just 
oh, it's another good summer song. We have so many of those in K-pop, and we already heard so many of them performed within Queendom, that it's just another song for me. That's just that's just not what I want to what I want to feel after listening to a song in the final. I want to find the songs to be the most special of them all. That's what I like, mentioned uh, Heolin and Kepler's songs like really really so strongly impressed because Heolin's song is just it's just a perfect anthem. It will be perfect for a live stage. But Kepler's song also goes into this anthem powerful direction that would be insane for the stage. That just isn't the case here. But now the problem is for me obviously. Because like Benchon's song has no issues whatsoever, it just isn't too exciting because it's just something that I've that, that that's just um too too common. How do I rank this along the WJS and Luna? Because like mentioned, the WJS and chorus was a bit this was lacking something for me. While the Luna song, like mentioned, had its cool moments, but just overall just it just wasn't really satisfying to me in the way it was done. So while those two songs had something in there where I was after like, okay, I really don't like that. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Brave Girls' song does not have that. We do also have to compare, like mentioned, the sound counter where I'm like, A, the idea behind Lunas and WJS and songs probably speaks to me more than the summer song here. So how do we rank the final three? I think thus far, I think my top three here is clear. I think Kepler is my one, actually. I think Hewlin is the two, and I think I put BBG on three. I think that's how my top three looks like. Okay. The heel and song like mentioned just suits this here much better will and while I probably will listen to Red Sun more from BBG then I will probably do heel in Waka Boom. I think it just still works here much much better and just has a very epic theme to it. How do I rank the bottom three here? I think there will be a, I think there will be a thing of realism that I honestly can one hundred percent tell you yet. Maybe I will actually like mentioned do a few realisms and then give you uh, my ratings next week alongside the live stages rankings and everything. Hmm. How do we, how would I rank the bottom three here for WJS and Luna and, and Brave Girls? Do we again put Brave Girls on last because I'm just not a biggest fan of that sound concept, even though the song itself is good? Or will I put Luna on last because while there were some cool ideas in there, not 100% enjoyed everything in there? Or do I enjoy um, WJS and at least because while there was a good idea and build up behind it, just kind of didn't feel as exciting as the rest? I actually can't tell you that yet. I actually don't want to get too ahead of myself. I actually, we re listen to those three songs, especially uh, again to really get a bit more of a glimpse of them to tell you a more accurate rating here. So, Kepler says on one, Healing says on two, and BBG says on three. But for the final three rankings for the fourth, fifth, and sixth place, I will definitely have to take a few more listens to give you the, the most accurate thought here. Now, obviously, we went a bit more again into the Comparison criticizing power, that's just the theme of the show, still, right? To some of did not say tournament. Because it is a one versus everybody um concept, I obviously have to compare everything to everything and have to go and it in a ranking aesthetic. If Whistle would have been another music video release or just a B-side, hey, cool song, okay? If Luna's pose would have been a experimental B-side they were trying, hey cool. Some parts in their own job, but for me, sure, why not? I enjoyed the fact that they tried this out here and it's creative for, for, the, for the album and everything. Cool, why not? You know? But we obviously are in this position here of finale, queendom, long build up to this, everybody versus everybody, how do the songs compare to each other and everything. So that's why I obviously had to now, once again, go back more into criticizingly break everything down to really um, think about the ranking here. I gave you know all my thoughts and all my opinions and all my feelings from these six songs. Some very positive, some a bit critical, but like mentioned, none were really negative. Like mentioned, the only thing I really don't like are like mentioned these these um the male voices and the just the edited voice in the Luna song. But other than that, we still had a lot of quality here today. I think every song still um speaks for itself and has its own strong parts. So I had a lot of fun with this nonetheless, with this very long video. I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed my reactions plus very detailed deep dive video. If you did, gladly leave a like down below to show me that you did. How does your ranking of the final round look like? How do your final songs compare to you? Or like how do they compare to you? Which is your number one, your two, your three? Do you agree with my points? 
Do you agree with the criticisms I did? Do you have similar feelings? Do you disagree with me? What was your favorite part of each song? Tell me all about down below. We'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. That's what I'm here for. You know, the conversations, the discussions afterwards and seeing different people's opinions that what music is there for. And obviously, uh, yeah, right down below the comments below as well. And as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing, if you want to support me, then gladly leave a sub as well. Or support me Patreon. Or leave a super thanks down below. It would help me a lot. That was very long. And I will probably take a break after this. Um, but yeah. Like mentioned, my top three from the finale is clear for me, and I will like mention. Um, I will actually be inter I will actually be interested to see how my final ranking, like all my rankings together, would make for the winner. Like I don't know how many points every round receives for for the for the ranking, but obviously we still have next week to go, right? And that can obviously change everything again because maybe. Maybe the live stage of Whistle will be so awesome and maybe they have such a creative concert for it going on where it will be throwing itself above to other songs. You know, maybe BBG stage will be so awesome that even though the song is a very classic sound to them, it will maybe go even above Healing. Or maybe Healing and Kepler's songs are both so insane everything that it will be ringing up too. And maybe Healing's live performance will be so insane that even though I like Kepler's audio itself more then maybe Healin's performance will actually rank above Kepler's because it was just just too good you know and maybe Luna's pose will feel even better or like feel really really cool with the with the stage and maybe the stage would be so awesome that it would be like hey while I'm not the biggest fan of the song maybe we'll actually rank us above some of the other songs that I thought were better everything can happen next week everything can happen there right now but for me now, for the audio here, I think I definitely made myself clear and how I feel about them. But the stages will definitely might be shaking things up. Obviously, the song will play into it. But if the stages or or the specific stages is that good, it may actually happen that even though I don't like the song more than the than the other song, we actually still rank above them. We will see that next week. Other than that, we now already have Luna and Kepler confirmed for June. The other groups will only be having comments as well around soon. So. For whatever content you may be interested in, for whatever content you may want you to aim for, I'll be seeing you again soon on this channel. Stay safe, have been happy. Have a great time. Have a great weekend. Have a lot of fun listening to every Queen of Song and obviously stream your favorite and everything. Like mentioned, I will just listen to the album up and down. You know, I don't, uh, I won't be listening to just one specific artist all the way through because I've said it before, I think everybody deserves to win. Like, even if Brave Ghost wins at the end, why would I complain, right? would be no reason to so i'm very excited to see who takes the crown next week very excited for that and very excited for more reaction on this channel so yeah have a good time have a great day thank you so much for watching and see you again soon especially next week with the finale of kingdom season 2 thank you so much for watching